entrance antiphon for the 33rd Sunday in the Church's Ordinary Time. The Lord said, I think thoughts of peace and not of affliction. You will call upon me and I will answer you and I will lead back your captives from every place. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Dear friends, we're sorry that we weren't able to screen the Mass last Sunday. Technical difficulties, but we'll welcome you back. And our Lord welcomes us all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray quietly our special intentions. Our quiet prayers are gathered up there in the church's prayer. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you. For it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Proverbs. A perfect wife, who can find her? She is far beyond the price of pearls. Her husband's heart has confidence in her. From her he will derive no little profit. Advantage and not hurt she brings him all the days of her life. She is always busy with wool and with flax. She does her work with 
eager hands. She sets her hands to the distaff. Her fingers grasp the spindle. She holds out her hand to the poor. She opens her arms to the needy. Charm is deceitful and beauty empty. The woman who is wise is the one to praise. Give her a share in what her hands have worked for and let her works tell her praises at the city gates. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Happy are those who fear the Lord. Happy are those who fear the Lord. Oh, blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. By the labor of your hands you shall eat. You will be happy and prosper. Happy, happy are those who fear the Lord. Your wife, like a fruitful vine, in the heart of your house, your children like shoots of the olive around your table. Happy are those who fear the Lord. And indeed, thus shall be blessed the man who fears the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion in a happy Jerusalem all the days of your life. Happy are those. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. You will not be expecting us to write anything to you, brothers, about times and seasons. Since you know very well that the day of the Lord is going to come like a thief in the night. It is when people are saying, how quiet and peaceful it is that the worst suddenly happens. As suddenly as labor pains come on a pregnant woman and there will be no way for anybody to evade it. But it is not as if you live in the dark, my brothers, for that day to overtake you like a thief, no, you are all sons of light and sons of the day. We do not belong to the night or to darkness, so we should not go on sleeping as everyone else does, but stay awake and sober. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia. Live in me and let me live in you, says the Lord. My branches bear much fruit. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus spoke this parable to his disciples. The kingdom of heaven, that's God's kingdom come from heaven to the earth, God's active, loving, powerful presence among us, especially in Jesus. The kingdom of heaven, is like a man on his way abroad who summoned his servants and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to a third one, each in proportion to his ability. Then he set out. The man who'd received the five talents promptly went and traded with them 
and made five more. The man who had received two made two more in the same way. But the man who had received one went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. Now a long time after, the master of those servants came back and went through his accounts with them. The man who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more. Sir, he said, you entrusted me with five talents. Here are five more that I have made. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You, can, you have shown you can be faithful in small things. I will trust you with greater. Come and join in your master's happiness. Next, the man with the two talents came forward. Sir, he said, You entrusted me with two talents. Here are two more that I have made. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have shown you can be faithful in small things. I will trust you with greater. Come and join in your master's happiness. Last came forward the man who had the one talent. Sir, said he, I had heard you were a hard man, reaping where you've not sown and gathering where you've not scattered. So I was afraid, and I went off and hid your talent in the ground. Here it is, it was yours, you have it back. But his master answered him, you wicked and lazy servant. So you knew that I reap where I've not sown and gather where I've not scattered. Well then, you should have deposited my money with the bankers and on my return I would have received my capital with interest. So now, take the talent from him and give it to the man who has five talents. But everyone who has will be given more. He'll have more than enough. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. As for this good for nothing servant, throw him out into the dark, where there will be weeping and grinding of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise In about 1830-odd, the city of Paris was in a dreadful state. Uh, the populace had not really recovered from the revolution, the age of reason, the defeat of Napoleon and their armies. And like now, a pandemic hit them of cholera this time. People were dying in abundance. There was a young man, 20 odd, who was studying at university, Antoine Frederick Osman. And he walked through poorer districts to get to the uni. And he could see the terrible state of the poorest people of Paris. One day he was challenged by something, someone who was in favour of his religion, for Frederick was a devout Catholic. He was challenged by this man. Christianity did some good in the past, the chap said. But what are Christians doing now? What are you doing now? You can see the state of the general people. Well, Osnum responded to that challenge, gathered a few of his fellow students at university and began what they called the St Vincent de Paul Society, intent upon helping the poorest people with their prayers and with practical help in the homes. The first thing they do was 
they did was to pool their firewood and take it to families without firewood. But the number of people joined them, the number grew quickly and more and more good they did among the poorest people. So much so that they were split into two conferences, two groups and then further groups. It was a very short time before there were actually 9,000 members of the St. Vincent de Paul. And in the second half of the 19th century, it spread further into Europe, to the Americas, even here to Australia in the 1850s. The St. Vincent de Paul Society. You know, uh, Antoine Frederick Osnan was only 40 when he died. He had had a brilliant career at the university, a distinguished academic figure there, but uh, he'd done immense good through the society, as has been done by the society ever since. I think that's what our Lord is asking us to do in a way, each in our own way, um, to have enterprise, to consider what we could do that would better honour God and better help people, to have a go, take a risk. Um, did you notice that in Jesus' story, the made-up story, the parable of the talents, that he gave to each according to his ability? Now God doesn't ask of us anything we're not capable of. He asks us though to use our talents in accordance with our ability. You know, a talent was first and foremost a weight and then it became a measure of gold and silver, a talent of gold, a talent of silver. It was quite an extraordinary amount of money in either mineral and uh, a very rich man and he entrusted some of his treasure to his employees, one of whom let him down terribly because he hadn't really had a go, he hadn't tried to make things better in his life, in his family, in his world. Please God will be enterprising. I think that's why the church authorities chose that first reading today about the perfect wife. Of course it's conditioned by what people look for in a woman at the time. I suppose everything in the Bible is ultimately conditioned in some ways, some significant ways, by the social conditions they live in and the ideas that are current. We see that in Paul's letters where he tries to take the sting out of slavery and uh, the oppression of women, but he fails to see that there are structures that should come crush, crashing down. Uh, a talent uh, was given in the story, five talents, two talents, one talent. Whatever we're given, please God will make good use of. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let's profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen.
our dear friends, our prayer of the faithful. God of all, because you have promised, you will call on me and I will answer you. We trustingly pray now. We pray that more people, ourselves included, will have sincere faith in God's immense love for each other and all people. Also, may more people, ourselves included, have great respect and awe because of God's almighty power, wisdom and mystery. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. May believers not be distracted from living the Christ's gospel of love by silly predictions of the world's imminent end. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. At this time of remembrance of the end of the hostilities of the Great War, we pray for more hope of peace for the very violent and troubled places of God's good earth. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Also at this time, when we celebrate the postponed NIDOC week, we pray for recognition of the long history of the indigenous peoples in this land. And we pray for support and awareness of their modern achievements and their just aspirations. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. May the spiritual gifts of women, single women, wives and mothers be a rich source of blessing to society and to families and households. May the ministry of women who reach out to the poor and suffering ignite in others the fire of sympathetic service. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are seriously ill or undergoing serious treatments, and especially those suffering in the pandemic here and throughout the world. We pray for the best medical and nursing help for them, even as we trust in God's ultimate care and power. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. May we be faithful to Christ in all matters of daily living and in greater ventures. May we not be too afraid or lazy to recognize and use our talents with energy and enterprise. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that the souls of those who have died will enjoy happiness with their Master. Edward and Regina Bagniuk, recently deceased, and all our deceased relatives, fellow parishioners, and other friends whose names are written in our November book of the faithful departed. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we trust you to answer our deepest needs that you know best. As guided by your word, we enter the now great miracle of the Eucharist through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father of mercies and faithful God. For you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners, and he became a neighbour to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed he announced to the world that you are our Father and that you care deeply for all your daughters and sons. And so, with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name as with one voice we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, and to be glorified, O God, you who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we're gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of his last supper, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Saviour, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, 
and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favour on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ, which has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to greater faith and charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Bishop of Rome, and Anthony, our Bishop, with all bishops, priests and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labour and are burdened. Make us serve them truly, after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand more as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, so that more and more people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in your light and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Apostles and Martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son, through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At our Saviour's command and formed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our communion antiphon. To be near God is my happiness, to place my hope in God the Lord. Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
May God bless you, Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let's go in peace and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks.